this little video is on chapter six, but the ideas that we're going to be using are going to take us into the next unit for seven, eight, and nine. Hey, in your book, figure 6.1 from chapter six talks about this little company that Ralph and Andrea Martin started called Fieldcom. And this is some of the, these are some of the number values from that figure. So it says here that Fieldcom in their first year did 600 grand in business and they had explicit costs like wages and materials of 400 grand that gave them a profit of 200 grand. Now in accounting, that would be all that we think about. That's fantastic for your first year's profit, 200 grand, that's a lot of money. But that's not how economists look at it. Economists say, but, but wait a minute, what did they have to do to get that 200 grand? So one of the things they had to do was they had to give up their jobs. So they had lost salary, and that, that's 160 grand, it was 80 grand each. So that comes right off the top. And then to start Fieldcom, they had to put up 20 grand of capital. So the way economists look at this is that while their accounting profit was 200 grand, their actual economic profit was 20 grand. Now that is still economic profit. Economic profit is fantastic. Economists describe economic profit as better than the market rate of return. It's a plus number. It's excessively high. So while they had 200 grand in accounting profit, According to economists, they made 20 grand in economic profit. We want to look at some relationships with revenue and cost to understand how economists look at different ranges of profit. So in your book, there are two equations for profit. TR minus TC equals profit. In economics, we use the pi sign to represent profit. And then there's also another one. So when we're doing tables, like revenue and cost tables in 7, 8, and 9, we can use this iteration of the equation. But sometimes in a model, to find an area of profit, we have to use a different, a different format. So we can do quantity times price minus average total cost, and that would equal profit. Sometimes, guys, you can substitute this P for an ATR. And this really, for me, makes the equation much, much easier to understand. So using the distributive property of math, if I distribute this quantity through Q times ATR is TR, Q times ATC is TC. So it really is T, TR minus TC. It's just in a little bit different format. So these are going to be good equations to know for 7, 8, and 9, but they're coming to us in chapter 6. So here we go. Hey, we want to look at three different ranges of profit. Profit that's economic, profit that's normal, and profit that's negative, or what we're going to call an economic loss. So anytime the average total revenue is going to be greater than the average total cost at a certain production quantity, we're going to say that that's an economic profit. What we'll do is we'll just say equals economic profit. Profit that's economic. Remember, economic profit, it's excessively high. It's greater than the market rate of return. It's got to be a plus number. We're going to say that anytime the ATR is just equal to the ATC at a certain quantity of production, we're going to say that that's a normal profit. A normal profit. Normal profit is described as the market rate of return. It has the neutral value zero. And it's, uh, it's kind of like what's expected. Uh, it's not excessively high or not excessively low. It's what's expected. The last one that we're going to look at are losses. So anytime the average total revenue is less than the average total cost, 
we're going to say that that profit is a loss. That's a negative profit. It's a loss. We can describe economic losses as being less than the market rate of return, excessively low. They'll have a negative value. So that's our wrap up on profit and chapter six, but these ideas are all going to come up in seven, eight, and nine because they're going to help us understand what market structure our firm is operating in. Thanks for viewing.